You know, out of all the Star Wars games, I expected that might be released on goodoldgames.com for May the 4th. Well, this one was not really one I expected. It's a surprise, but as Emperor Palpatine would say, a welcome one. Now, my history with, with this game is that I was like 10 or 11 when The Phantom Menace came out, and I was a pretty recent Star Wars fan. So, um, what was going on was that, of course, I jumped on the chance to play any Episode 1 game that came out. I played the official game, I played Racer, I played Battle for Naboo, and hey, GOG.com, if you're watching this, I really want Battle for Naboo, alright? So, get on that, please. And what people seem to not really understand is how big Episode 1 actually was. It wasn't like nowadays when there's a Star Wars movie about every year. And it wasn't, I mean, The Force Awakens was pretty big. But Episode 1 was bigger. I mean, damn. So, we're gonna jump straight into this one, and we are gonna uh, use... We are gonna remove this racer, because we're not gonna play this Anakin. And we're just gonna <coughs> call him Racer. Basically, Racer Anakin is the standard racer you get when you launch the game. And you get into a bar, and here you can shoot a droid away, and once that is done, you can p basically pick whom you're going to be racing as. What's pretty neat is that... Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, I forgot I had actually shut this in... Uh, shut over this to a joystick, and as you can see, you can... You can fl use a, quite a lot of pod races, and you can actually um, adjust them as much as you want as well. And all of them have this different stats. So some have better top speed, and some have better turning and stuff like that. So basically turning and top speed are the ones that you should be on the lookout for. And actually Anakin's is one of the better pods uh, on how to do it. Uh, so Despite me saying we're not going to play as Anakin, let's play as Anakin. And our first race is the Bonta Training Course. Of course, we can switch to some of the other ones, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're going to go with the Bonta Training Course. The track favorite is Zebulba. And we must play fourth or better to progress. Now, as you can see here, we can inspect our vehicle. We can upgrade our vehicle. You can buy pit droids. Even change our vehicle, but we're not going to do that, so... Instead, we skip right to the race. I'm currently using my joystick to play this. Uh, the reason I do that is partly for the experience, but also because I want to feel the force feedback, and I want to have better control. Um, if you're playing this with a keyboard, stuff gets tricky real fast, especially when you are quite quickly break. So, we're not going to do that. We are going to use the rear cam. There's even, you know, a first-person camera mode. The nice thing about this game is actually the arcade version. The arcade version of this game is simply amazing. And... The reason it's amazing is because it has basically two different thrusters. So you don't actually play it with uh, a stick or a wheel or stuff like that. No, you have to use this with... It's a new lap record! Oh, I so remember that sound. And you have to play it basically by... And your pod racer by pulling the thrusters on each side, basically like they do in the movie. And that is a pretty nifty way for a control system on an arcade. And, uh, there is actually a local arcade that have this game. So when I challenge people, I usually win. Because I know how to manage my thrust, I know how to maneuver the canyon, 
and I knew uh, I know a little bit about what risks I can take. And the reason I know this is because I spent far too much time with this game on my childhood, both on the Nintendo 64 and on the PC. So we're heading in on the second lap to see if we actually beat our time. We actually did that, but most I think that was mostly because we got a running start. So we need to make sure we keep this up. You can also use uh, a button that makes it basically makes makes you two poses. And what's even nicer is that it actually has a working throttle as well. I use my joystick throttle, but I basically just keep it keep the entire thing at full speed. And when I want to slow down for something, I'll just break. This is by far the better better way to play this. So we'll have to use our acceleration. I can see we have one right behind us. So at least I can see that on the minimap. Yeah, I can see them. At least three competitors right behind us. But we're gonna win this, no problem. So, our total lap time is 3 minutes and 10 seconds, and we came first, so that's nice. So, we won the race, and <laughs> and right after us uh, came Sebulba, and then won Sandit, and then Tempto Pelagis, then Clegg Holdfast, Gazgano, Aldorbido, and all the other ones. And we want some crew goods as well. Not that we can really use them so far, but the winnings... We could, we could check the junkyard if there are any. I got a lot of a junk. <sighs> yeah, we can't afford that. It's basically too expensive. Um, that's an air brake. You race are pretty good, no doubts there, huh? <laughs> Why do we buy our stuff at Wado's? I mean, what? it doesn't really make make any sense. You beat Sebulba with that pod racer of yours? Ah. We can actually afford wanna that one. Choboda. So now our top speed has been <laughs> uh, have been upgraded. So we can check our vehicle upgrades right here. And as you can see, our new pod have already been installed into our racer, so we'll just start the next race. Off we go! I don't really remember this lap. I mean, I should. I've played most of this game, but I was a kid back then when I did that, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly how much I can get away with. Yeah, since this game doesn't have any history to it, pretty much everything we do is going to be a new lap record. Oh, we're actually going to go around. We're going to beat number 12. Uh, we're going to actually outfly that guy. Here's number 10. Let's see how many we can actually... Actually go past. 11. Uh, 10. 9. I'm not sure I can actually get past those two, but maybe. It depends on how much top speed we actually got. Total time, 1 minute and 14 seconds with a new lap record on the last round. That was nice. Looks like we got ourselves a new racer. Yeah, as you might imagine, all the races aren't available at once, so you basically win 
races. So, of course, the first Sebulba is, is one of the more difficult ones to get. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's go to Ando Prime and see what you can do about it. Oh crap. I tried to do something fancy there, but I wasn't really allowed to, so... Rather, I got rammed before I could, so... Ando Prime is actually one of the levels I do remember. And one of the more fun ones, too. Because it's, it's a bit longer. It has a good share of obstacles, and... It even have alternate routes and stuff like that, so... And a big bridge that I just usually crash over, so... There we go, we got a break, and... Basically, the breaking should only be done in the short term, so... Unless, of course, you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing playing this game, uh, you should be breaking as often as possible. Then we have this little... Not really ice lake, but pretty much the same thing that you can go over, so... At any rate, it feels kind of nice playing this with my joystick. Far more nice than it does playing it with my mouse and keyboard, in fact. Because the joystick, especially with force feedback on, gives a lot of feeling to the entire thing. And while modern joysticks doesn't have what I would call proper boost feedback. I don't know if I took the right route or if there even is such a thing on this map, but I haven't lost my position at that rate, so there's that. Let's go straight ahead and see if we can do that. We actually can do that, that's kinda nice. So for once I don't actually consider that new lap record anything. Uh, because what I need right now is pretty much just to try and beat this lap here. And beat the next lap as well, for that matter. With careful appliances and brakes, we are in the clear. And it's the ice lake again. Not really my favorite part of the map, obviously. Yeah, you usually have a limited amount of lives, so you can usually respawn if you crash. But the thing is, the loss in acceleration usually means that crashing is something you really want to avoid. Just play it avoid it. What's nice with uh, the good old games version is that due to the resolution being proper, the game has aged pretty much as much as you remember it. I mean, of course, uh, nostalgia goggles is always going to be a thing, but it doesn't look all that bad. Okay, so apparently uh, the tiny entrance to the white was what I would call the click and close. I'll remember that for the next round. Off we go. Our speed is almost 500, so... Gonna be tricky. I felt some parts of the second lap was a bit more sloppy than it felt. And... <coughs> oh, crap. I can't let myself get... get uh, pushed out on the ice. Especially not with a broken engine. Alright.
We are doing a repair right now, but that will count towards our speed. Not sure if we can actually afford that, but apparently Anakin says it's working, so it's working. Apparently I can go this way as well. I think I missed out on the top side route just because of it, but that's part of this game's charm. There's mostly shortcuts and stuff like that. So five minutes later, we might actually clear out our tribe. Not too shabby, really. And of course, we got a new pod racer. Kind of a big one. So, Aquil Aqu Aquilaris, I think, would be the... So, apparently we can actually, actually switch here, so... Um, we can sh 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 make sure that it's a winner takes all kind of deal. So I'm gonna see about ah, buying more pots. Welcome to Watto's shop. Huh? Take a look around. I got everything you need. Huh? <laughs> you bam up hooter. All right, so we have an upgrade now that lets us turn faster. That's gonna be nice. And of course, we're starting to race, race with the boost, so... But now this thing is gonna be far more maneuverable than I'm used to, so it's gonna be interesting to see if that hampers my racing for any boost. Because maneuverability is a double-edged sword. It's not always the first thing you want, especially not if you're used to your maneuverability being one way, and then all of a sudden ever entirely. Ah, oh, crap. At least our maneuverability got us through that one. Enough. Actually, this seems to work fairly well. I have to say these longer tracks are usually a bit more annoying. I would prefer shorter, more difficult tracks uh, rather than, you know, stuff like this that takes forever. And forever, in this case, have been around two minutes. Or correct to go to be around two minutes. It's a new lap record. Let's see if we can't beat that lap record. Because I've made several mistakes. mind about where to go. I would say top side was the 
better choice. Alright, so final lap. Still no one behind us. I'm pretty tempted to just drive them away and see what happens. And we snagged our third pod razor off. And it's a quite neat one as well. But that is going to be that. I uh, we actually won all the trogots as well, so. But right now I feel like basically just relaxing, playing this a bit. Wait, I need to see this. There's no way they activated the multiplayer, right? There's no way they actually activated this. No, I think... Nah, I think it's LAN only, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. So no, they didn't... Th it seems like they did not add any further multiplayer, but... One thing I actually would like to see in not only Racer, but also stuff like X-Wing Alliance and X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, it's uh, basically a multiplayer through GOG Galaxy. They did something like that for Alien vs. Predator, and they really should do so for the Star Wars games as well. If they did that, I'm not sure I would ever stop playing it. 